Hey folks, Phil here for a quick announcement. Um, because of the support you all have given me over the last couple of years in particular, I'm able to be a full-time content creator over the summer. I'll still be teaching normally during the school year, but I won't be working a summer job to instead focus on my content. So expect to see more YouTube videos over the summer, as well as some guest appearances uh, on other streams and things like that. If you are looking for ways to support me, these are some of the things you can do. But most importantly, just keep watching the content. You know, if these numbers keep up, who knows, maybe in another year or two this will be a full-time thing instead of a summer thing. So I hope you enjoy today's video. Hello folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraben, you here for another Legacy video. Today we're going to be playing with Musao's Mono Black Helm decklist. Um, and kind of the first thing I want to do here is talk about the original decklist, um, because I had to make some changes. So this decklist was originally print, uh, submitted with four sinkholes, and it had a little bit more of like a Ponza vibe to it. But I don't think sinkhole is particularly playable in Legacy right now, unless, well, maybe not even unless, maybe we can just stop there. Um, land destruction as sort of a viable archetype has really gone away. It's fine if you're supplementing a Death and Taxes or a Delver game plan with something like Wasteland, but the days of like sinkholing one land and just kind of innately being able to win a game off of that are pretty far gone. And the reason because of that is largely due to fire design. When there are powerful things like Uro that can really just instantly undo the damage that a sinkhole as has done while being a threat later as well or singular threats like murktide regent that can just get in play and then like oh i got murktide regent into play on turn two or turn three nice sinkhole you did after murktide resolved um those were i think like very good reasons to not want to be playing sinkhole so i'm going to try to keep as much of the rest of the donor's vision for this deck list intact while kind of adjusting the deck list to be a little bit more competitive so their decklist originally had two Sudden Edicts in the main deck, and I've just been super impressed by this card in Legacy, generally speaking, so I've bumped it up to an entire playset. Just having an uncounterable way to go and deal with things like Murktide Regent or other large threats has just been so good. It buys you so much time versus Delver. Um, generally speaking, this deck is looking to Dark Ritual or Chrome Mox out a card like Dark Confidant, which can maybe take over a game. A card like Douthy Voidwalker, which just can't be dealt with in combat normally and also serves as a graveyard hate card. Or an Opposition Agent, which is very good at shutting off fetch lands and being sort of a stronger mana denial portion than just like a sinkhole itself. So the original deck list had Opposition Agent, two Wastelands, and four sinkholes as kind of their mana denial package. And I didn't think that that was strong enough, sort of like on its own, to go and be winning games of Magic. So I kind of added some more lands to the deck, added a couple more copies of things that already existed, and kind of made the Urza Saga package a little bit robust. As some of my viewers have been quick to point out, um, Urza Saga! Very frequently appearing in deck lists that are appearing on this channel, right? Like, good card is good. And one of the things I wanted to do in expanding the Urza Saga package was have a main deck Shadow Spear. Um, this deck has a few Ancient Tombs and a few Dark Confidants that are going to cause some amount of self-damage, and I really wanted to be able to go and combat that. And kind of beyond that, I've reworked the sideboard a little bit. So a lot of times these mono black decks will do something like play Trinispheres or Chalice of the Void in the main deck. So we don't have that here or we don't have like Thought Seizes or anything like that. So in the sideboard, I figure we kind of have a couple of things we have to address. Number one is first the Karn the Great Creator package. And it's minus two ability lets you fish out an artifact. And normally, you will get a liquid Metal Coating to go and blow up some early lands, or Mycosynth Lattice to go and lock your opponent out of the game from casting spells, period. But there's a few other things here as well that you can get for utility, including Crucible of Worlds to let you replay your Urza Sagas from the graveyard. Now, since we don't have the Thought Seizes or the Hymns or the Chalices or the Transfers in Game 1, I don't think our game versus combo is totally solid, so I wanted to make sure we had some reasonable black card in the sideboard to help our game versus combo, and I've chosen him to Torok. 
you just as easily could choose another permanent based hate card. Um, I think punching a hole with discard is okay. We're probably going to have a pretty reasonable turn four-ish goldfish a lot of times. Our primary win condition is going to be controlling either Douthy Voidwalker or Leyline of the Void. Now, both of these cards go and exile cards that would be put into your opponent's graveyard. And Helm of Obedience mills until a creature card is put into your opponent's graveyard. Okay? So if you control either Douthy Voidwalker or Leyline of the Void and you activate Helm of Obedience for X equals 1, you will win the game if that kind of resolves without your opponent doing anything. So this is kind of our way to win, and we have Dark Ritual, Chrome Mox, and a couple copies of Ancient Tomb to kind of power us out and get there. Um, sort of still in deck building, I'm a little curious about how many Ancient Tombs I should be actually running. The original version of this deck list ran more Black Black cards, since this like was a sinkhole deck as well, and that's kind of why there's an Urborg here. But, like, An Ancient Tomb is very much not free. It's possible that I should run a third, just because, like, Urza Saga into Ancient Tomb is a very respectable start, and, like, Ancient Tomb plus Swamp or Ancient Tomb plus Chromox is a turn one opposition agent. And actually, now that I'm saying that out loud... Ancient Tomb. Let's, let's go ahead and bump that up to a, a third. I don't want to go too ham on the colorless sources, because, like, I absolutely do need to hit Black Black... This is still 19 black sources, and it's like kind of a touch more than that because Urza Saga can also fetch up Chrome Mox in a pinch or an expedition map. This is something that I added to the deck so that we can kind of expedition map into another Urza Saga and keep our chain going. All right, um, that was kind of a long deck tech, so let's just kind of hop into the games directly. Uh, remember, if you're a regular, please consider throwing me a like before this video begins, and if you like what you see, please consider subscribing. Let's battle. This is going to be a fun league. Uh, I will absolutely keep this opening hand. So we get to play a turn one Leyline, turn one Urza Saga, Chrome Mox, Bob, turn two, start activating Urza Saga while using Bob to kind of get removal out of the way. Um, this is going to be exciting. Snow Covered Island. So we're potentially facing down some sort of control or combo deck. Um, if this is Delver, I want this Sudden Edict, and if it's not, I, like, very much don't want this Sudden Edict. That's tricky. I'm always playing Urza Saga, and I'll play that prior to another spell just to, uh, play this Chromox around a daze. I think I'm just gonna imprint the Opposition Agent and leave myself with the flexibility. I still have two threats if I count Urza Saga, so I'm just going to keep the Sudden Edict for the flexibility here. Alright, there is a Brainstorm in response. Sort of as a side note here, um, my podcast, the Eternal Glory podcast, just put out an entire episode um, on identifying what deck your opponent is playing based on things like their land drops and other early plays. Um, so if you're into the audio media, uh, consider checking it out. Oh, I wonder if Prismatic Ending is on Okay, it's a source of flash errors. If my opponent had Prismatic Ending, I wonder whether it's better to hit Chrome Mox or Bob. Um, just kind of as a thought experiment there. Uh, this will be Land Drop and Pass. If my opponent fetches, I may flash in Opposition Agent. It gives up an Urza Saga token, but it's uh, very powerful to take a control player off of their uh, turn 3 fetch because it would like deny things like Teferi and Narset from coming into play. But it's very bad versus a second Swords to Plowshares. It's a little awkward that, like, I put an Opposition Agent under this, right? That has telegraphed that, like, hey, opponent, you need to be thinking about Opposition Agent. All right, let's fucking get him. Let's get him. All right, do you have another Swords? No, you don't. Oh, God, and I get to see my opponent's entire deck here. It is absolutely screenshot time, baby. Okay, so we are essentially playing against a Stoneblade deck. My opponent has very few ways to actually win the game. Um, although my opponent might have like a Stoneforge Mystic in hand because there's three of them here, which is weird. All right, let's pull a Tundra out of their deck. Oh, and I've just outright stopped their turn. Nice. All right. So let's take this opportunity to do this. Let's grab an Expedition map here. 
use this opportunity to play Tundra, and I don't think I'm going to attack with Opposition Agent into a Snapcaster Mage. That just that just doesn't feel good to me. Yeah, ponder away. It's going to be hard for my opponent to Prismatic Ending away an Opposition Agent as well. I wonder if I should have taken Volcanic Island or Plateau specifically to play towards making it harder for my opponent to cast Prismatic Ending for X equals 3. Okay, I think that was a small misplay on my end. Like, I took Tundra thinking that, like, access to White White was more relevant than anything else, but I think I was just wrong. All right, so we're playing against Stoneblade. My opponent did not, like, based on the deck... On the screenshot I have of my opponent's deck list, they did not have Teferi or Narset. However, they were fetching on turn three, presumably to tap out for a three drop. So I'm going, or sorry, there was one Narset. Um, I'm going to guess that they have either two Narsets or one Narset, one Teferi as uh, relevant cards in their deck. So I think that makes me want to bring in Eliminate. And against Prismatic Ending, I'm kind of less keen on chrome mox it's just like you don't want to play a chrome mox and then have your opponent just go like one mana take two of your cards so i'm gonna try to board out these probably for like eliminate eliminate pithing needle uh with the plan for pithing needle being needling stoneforge mystic or jace the mind sculptor it's also reasonable to just, like, name Flooded Strand if I happen to have it in my opening hand. Oh, that is a lot of mana. Is that fine? That might be fine, though. Like, it's turn one Opposition Agent into turn two Urza Saga with Ancient Tomb to be activating it or Swamp Burborg to be activating it. I think it's fine. It's better if my opponent doesn't fetch on turn one and I, like, get a fetch land with uh, Opposition Agent just sort of innately. Alright. Swamp, go. Alright. I will absolutely try it. Let's go. Dark Ritual, Opposition Agent. You have Force of Will. Alright, opponent does have Force of Will. Okay, and do a tap to Mystic Sanctuary. Non-basic lands have real costs, folks. Oh ho 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 ho. I probably just play another one, right? I probably play Urza's Saga and then Dark Ritual Opposition Agent if my opponent fetches. It's possible that playing Opposition Agent right now is correct, though. But my opponent can't respond end of turn. If my opponent has Tundra or Plateau in hand currently, it's a little awkward for me. Or Lightning Bolt. I'm going to go with Upkeep Opposition Agent here, off Dark Ritual. Alright, let's 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 do that. Opponent only has two white producing lands in their deck list. I am absolutely good with this. Alright, there is a Snow-Covered Island. That's absolutely fine. And uh, now we're just going to grab some creatures sideways and see what happens. We'll drop my opponent to 15. I'll have a Jace pretty well covered. Another expressive iteration, yeah. Like, this this game is not about cards in hand right now. This game is about, like, the large amount of power that I am about to put onto the board. Alright, that is a Brainstorm in Exile, which my opponent can absolutely cast here. I did not see any sort of Terminus or Dress Down type card in game one that can answer multiple versus Saga tokens. Alright, uh, there's a Scalding Tarn, which is not really live right now. Let's activate my Urza Saga. And I'll do it again on my own turn. Alright, um, don't really want to be drawing this many lands, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, so there's a cheeky play I can do of just, like, grabbing a Pithing Needle and Pithing Needling that Scalding Tarn so that if Opposition Agent is removed, that land is not live. I think I'm just going to get Retrofitter Foundry so that these, um tokens end up being larger so let's crash in for three okay that's just 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 opposition agent is just fucking good enough ggs what a beating all right um i've got kind of a tough opening hand here where like i have a ley line which is a part of my combo finish um and i have two urza sagas 
So I would go like Swamp on turn one, probably. Urza Saga on turn two. Make a couple constructs and just plan on Urza Saga uh, a little bit later. Um, I'm on the player draw here. I'm on the draw. I think I'm. I think I'm gonna keep this. Now let's put this ley line into play, and then I'll uh, respond to my opponent. Says that uh, me and my partner watch a lot of your videos. Good luck, my dude. You too. Tell your partner I say hi. See if uh, see if you end up slaying the mighty Phil. All right, another flooded strand deck. All right. Um, sudden edict is. Fine. If my opponent plays a threat, I might just go ahead and just Dark Ritual Sudden Edict it to take it off the board so that I can focus my mana on Urza Saga for the following turns. Um, but it looks like we're probably playing against a control deck. Um, I don't want to be drawing more Sudden Edict versus control. Um, it kind of is what it is. We'll see how far down the control spectrum my opponent is. Like, I would love for them to just, like, play a Ledger Shredder or a Stoneforge Mystic. Like, I'm very well equipped to deal with that. Um. <laughs> nice. Nice cycling card. Um, seriously, though, like, they still got a card worth of value out of that. Like, it feels good on my end, but, like, it doesn't feel that bad on their end. All right, what did that Ponder do? That Pondo, pon, Ponda? That Ponda did not shuffle. All right, let's, uh... I just feel like I am absolutely the fucking villain playing this deck. Okay, opponent did not fetch. Opponent going to upkeep fetch. Opponent is going to upkeep fetch. So I haven't given them an opportunity to source of plowshares or anything yet. Um, uh, feels like a trap. This This feels like a trap. Like, opponent intentionally waited until their upkeep where they would have more mana available. I'm, I'm not good with it. I just... Spidey sense is tingling. Opponent is playing too, paying too much attention to the timing of their fetch land there. If they would have fetched end of turn, I 100% would have jammed Opposition Agent into it. But with them waiting, it, it doesn't feel good to me. Them waiting might have just been an indicator of that brainstorm. Uh, but I don't feel great about it. All right. Is another cantrip that's fine. That ponder shuffles. Okay. Still more ponder. No shuffle that time around, though, so they did find something that they liked eventually. Let's start constructing. Uh, Bob is cool. Do another construct. I think this is Retrofitter Foundry. I am unsure on land drop here. I think I want to play Swamp so that I can Dark Ritual out Opposition Agent if my opponent sweeps the board. It it just like very much feels like after how much digging my opponent did that like a Terminus or a Supreme Verdict could happen. So like I just I just want to be prepared for that. Three mana for a Teferi. Uh, I will respond with Dark Ritual, and then I'll just go ahead and send an Opposition Agent into play. My opponent can bounce it if they want, but I think they need to bounce a Construct Token. Oh no, they are going for the Opposition Agent. Okay, because they have a fetch, sure. And then uh, they could get a uh, Tundra and answer one of these. Oh, okay, they are going for the Retrofitter Foundry itself, sure. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six total mana to work with this turn. That's a lot. Always playing Urza Saga. Um, I'm not going to play around like a Solitude here. So let's send one of these at Teferi, one of those at face, and deal two damage, take out the Teferi. Then I'll go ahead and play out... Dark Confidant, and leave up Opposition Agent for end of turn. The next turn I will have 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 damage, uh, which is theoretically lethal. I don't expect to actually kill my opponent next turn. Um, Narset is fine. Not gonna respond to that with Opposition Agent and just give my opponent more information. Reveals Swords to Plowshares, which I expect to hit my Dark Confidant. Oh, it's a Teferi again. Uh... I'll respond in the same fashion as last turn. 
Dark Ritual, Opposition Agent. And opponent can bounce Opposition Agent again if they want. All right, they're going for a Construct this time. That's fine. Let's see what Bob gives me. Another Urza Saga. What a beating. Three damage, one damage, two damage to my opponent. Um, I don't want to play out another Urza Saga yet, I don't think. All right. So, that kills Narset. This kills Teferi. This goes face. An opponent is doing a pretty good job of staving off death. Um, but I have a lot of resources here, and I've kept my opponent's graveyard from being a resource, so, like, they're down a Timeless Dragon from where they otherwise might be. And I have Sudden Edicts for, like, sharks that are going to hit combat. That's fine. Okay, sure. And I am absolutely expecting sharks uh, from Shark Typhoon, just um, throwing that out there. Uh, sure, that's very good. I wish I uh, still had access to uh, Retrofitter Foundry. That just feels so good here. Right, let's make yet another construct. And I'm thinking Shadow Spirit this turn is weird. Because, like, it represents a lethal threat, but means that I don't have Sudden Edict up without imprinting a Sudden Edict on a Chrome Mox. Just get an Expedition map. I might just play this to represent lethal damage here without imprinting. I think I will, I think I will do that. All right. This is just the grow the grow the idiots and let's try to bash in for the the 10 damage which represents lethal. I've got a sudden edict backing it up. Is that good enough? Not this turn. Um but we'll probably get there next turn. On it goes to 5 and if they fetch with that scalding tarn, either one of these is lethal. And either one of them is probably lethal next turn anyway, because I can just make one more Construct token. All right. Brain, brainstorm away. Oppon opponent is digging. They are getting lots of looks. Okay. Um, but that's not good enough. They they literally looked at half their deck, but just like couldn't come back from the, the deficit I had. Um, so it turns out that multiple Urza Saga start was uh, very good against this opponent. Um, so for similar reasoning to last round, I probably want to get rid of Chrome Mox, and my opponent has shown me multiple Planeswalkers that Eliminate will be good against. I'll also bring in Pithing Needle. So I think my sideboarding is going to be the same as last round. Um, I kind of like Crucible of Worlds to recur Urza Saga, but I think I'll just leave that as a Karn target. I, I also could see going down Sudden Edict. Um, I don't think that card is innately amazing. <laughs> opponent says Saga real good against my No Wasteland deck. Yeah. Yeah, I I did get that impression. <laughs> opponent says, hey, you should get on my train. Unbanned top would be sweet in Saga decks. <laughs> Literal lol, my friend. Literal lol. Oh my god, that would be beyond disgusting. Ugh. Uh, let's go down one Sudden Edict, and do I play the Crucible? I could also just play the Trinosphere, or one him, just Miser's him. Play the Crucible. Op died for Terminus's sins. Um, okay. I don't like this hand. R like, Retrofitter Foundry just making idiots on its own isn't great. I'm missing... The other side of this kill and i have two sudden edicts which like i don't really want i think the average six is going to be better than this yes i like this much better let's keep this and throw back one swamp i think this is just going to be a douthy void walker into douthy void walker opening and just try to um, exhaust my opponent's early removal options on these before i roll out the urza saga Can you imagine like top being legal with Urza Saga. Is that a thing? You can do that in Vintage, right? Uh. Uh. Okay. Alright. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, don't don't mind if I do, actually. Let's well, Dark Ritual play. Um, actually, I want to play Douthy Voidwalker first. I don't really expect days, but 
want this one to resolve if I only get one of these. Well, Retrofitter Foundry, which I expect to immediately eat a Prismatic Ending. But if this eats an ending this turn so I never get to activate it, then that means, like, Douthy Voidwalker gets a connection in. So, like, there's that. There is a very real question. Oh, okay. Uh, there's a very real question of whether or not I should play another Douthy Voidwalker if my opponent plays, like, a Tundra, but they didn't. Okay, that's cool. Uh, I'm totally good with that draw. Uh, let's let's bash. Let's absolutely just uh, get a stream of creatures going here. And the goal is to just, like, be strong enough on board that a three-mana Planeswalker doesn't undo everything that I've done so far this game. Okay, that is no white mana yet. Um, so, like, this is good in all. I'm not even sure if I attack it if I'm being just completely completely honest it may just be that ignoring this and just trying to finish the game is better i am not going to do that i am going to kill it but i want to point out that it may not be correct to um attack narset attack you and now i've got opposition agent for when my opponent attempts to fetch out white mana there is an expressive iteration okay sure all right, that, that is innate white mana. That is a prismatic ending on Retrofitter Foundry. I think I'm just going to take my value here and make a creature rather than flash in Opposition Agent. Because, like, I have a... I have Urza Saga Construct tokens coming, and this is still a two-turn clock as is. I think that's going to be fine. Oh, this is so much gas. All right. Oh, I'm just checking goodies here. There are worlds where I could sacrifice a Douthy Voidwalker for a Narset, but... Onboard damage feels great right now. Send them. Click my 7, put my opponent to 6. Have Urza Saga and Opposition Agent waiting in the wings. And these are these are unblockable, so like a Snapcaster Mage can't jump in the way of them. Okay, there is another land drop. Okay, there's, there's some tapping and untapping going on here. 3 mana, 4 to Fairy. It feels like my opponent has blue blue available for actual factual counterspell. If my opponent bounces a Douthy Voidwalker, I have three, four, five, I, I have lethal damage still. Uh, I don't think I'm going to expose myself to a counter spell here. Um, there is a bounce on a Douthy Voidwalker. That's fine. So let's end step. Make a critter. There's a 2-2. Two, two. Will soon be larger. Eliminate's cool. Make a critter. And do some searching. I will grab an expedition map for if this game goes long, I think. Let's do that. And I will absolutely just send these at my opponent's dome. I am not going to uh, mess around with killing Teferi. My opponent should hopefully be dead before my opponent gets another activation of this. Okay, there is a Snapcaster Mage. That's fine. This is, this is just jumping in the front to save four life. I am good with that. Opponent's at two and is in a world of hurt. Now a a sweeper can get this out of this that out of this situation. Uh, like the dress down type cards can as well. All right, there is a plus on Teferi. Let's see what if anything comes next. My opponent doesn't have to take any more actions now, in all likelihood. Okay, they are though. Art Narset, Old Breacher, sure, absolutely. A day's undoing sort of situation could become awkward. Yeah, I can't respond to that. Yeah, that's definitely awkward. All right. You did your thing. You have a bunch of cards. You have a bunch of mana. Can you beat this? Melt down. All right. I will, I will crack my map. I will search for an Urza Saga. Then that is going to resolve. Oh no, they just killed themselves. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, so Meltdown is symmetrical. Uh, my opponent did an instant speed Meltdown, and now they can't... Uh... Oh no. <laughs> oh, this is so sad. Oh my gosh, I, yeah, opponent has never cast an instant speed meltdown before after doing, uh, Hull Reacher Day's undoing. Oh my gosh. Uh, I'm, I'm just absolutely flabbergasted. That, what a roller coaster of emotions going from, like, 
okay, I'm good except for like a day's undoing type situation. They have the day's undoing. I get meltdown, but they didn't float mana. So they just, oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm just rolling. What a, what a cool game. GG's. All right, I've got kind of a tricky hand again for round three here. I don't have black black for Douthy Voidwalker. I have a reasonable Urza Saga hand with any mana source drawn. That's probably enough hits being on the draw that I keep this, but I'm a little unsure about that. Like if I if I miss the like the land draw and I get to like All right, you know what? You'll fully navigated game. What can I say? Uh, if opponent is playing a graveyard-based combo deck, they are going to have a bad fucking time against, like, both Leyline and Douthy Voidwalker. Um, let's assume my opponent is playing something akin to Reanimator. Um, I'll probably bring in this Trenosphere. I don't know that I really want him. I probably don't need Expedition Map as additional juice. Game probably ends at that point. Um, let's play Trenosphere. And it might even be correct to just, like, play Pithing Needle as well. Uh, main deck is probably pretty well suited for this matchup. If it's Oops All Spells, we can name name one of their enablers. And if it's Reanimator, we can name Grizzlebrand. Like, stopping Grizzlebrand from drawing 7 and then being able to sudden edict it is pretty sick. Um, do that. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Alright, do I want a mulligan to Leyline? This has a turn 1 Douthy Voidwalker but a Thoughtseize can take Dark Ritual. Kind of whatever. Well, not kind of whatever, it's kind of good. It stops me from playing my hate cards. I think since this hand just absolutely falls apart to a piece of discard and then, like, basically does nothing, I think I'm willing to mulligan, but I will keep a similar hand on six, which is, I think, where I'm at with this. Um, Let's throw away land now, if my opponent has, like, a Chancellor, throw away Sudden Edict number two. All right, Underground C. Um, all right. Let's attempt Dark Ritual into Douthy Voidwalker. I wonder what we're playing against. Like, it could be Blue-Black Reanimator, but that's such an uncommon deck list that that doesn't make a ton of sense. Like, this also could be a Black-Red Reanimator deck that has show and tells in the sideboard. Okay, could be Storm. All right. Um, uh, let's let's crash in. Um, this is. I I need to see a card played. Is is where I'm going here. Not quite comfortable with where I'm at right now. Um, crash in for three. On it goes to fourteen. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to play Leyline or Karn. Like my my opponent. Th this is. Essentially the end of game two and my opponent hasn't played a card yet. Play Karn. That way if their Storm artifact mana is off the table. Going to minus Karn. I am not sure what I am getting. Um, I guess I can just get Helm. No, I want to leave Helm chilling. Uh, what's somewhat threatening? I guess Liquid Metal Coating is somewhat threatening. I can also just get Lattice and just have that chilling in my hand. Because I win if I draw an Ancient Tomb or a Dark Ritual. Yeah, let's get Lattice and make it look like I have that next turn. Uh, it's very possible I go through this game and not know what my opponent is playing. All right, folks in the comments, give me a timestamp. Tell me what you think this opponent is playing. Uh, are we 3-0? and Oh, we're 3-0 and and we haven't dropped the game. Uh, apparently this deck's good. All right, so it's round four. We are potentially playing against Death and Taxes. Yorian doesn't always indicate that, and... Very recently, it's often indicated Cephalid Breakfast, oddly enough. My hand is okay. I have Bob into Urza Saga as a game plan with Helm, multiple Helms as endgame. Um, I'm going to keep this. A Dark Ritual improves this hand. I think a Douthy Voidwalker improves this hand. A Leyline improves this hand. We're playing against Death and Taxes, and like, they like, just can't physically kill me quickly, I will have a lot of time to build things up. All right, um, this is probably a Lurin, is going to be my guess. 
Um, opposition Agent is a fine draw, although I would like a Dark Ritual to pair with it. Um, that draw probably means that I don't play Urza's Saga next turn. Ooh, is my opponent stuck on mana? I am totally good if they're stuck on mana here. Ah, fine. Play your second main phase island, see if I care. Okay, yeah, Recruiter of the Guard pretty much confirms Aluren in my mind. All right, it's just Recruiter for Recruiter, just opponent getting their value there. That's that's okay. Um, Dalty Voidwalker. Is that better than Bob for this turn? I think it's better than Bob for this turn. The graveyard matters in some fringe cases for Uro. The argument for playing Bob is funneling me towards lands for Helm. The argument for playing Douthy Voidwalker is that drawing Dark Ritual results in me getting a kill next turn, which I think is very important. Okay, they're just prismatic endinging me, uh, which is actually not great for me here, fortunately. Uh, and I'll take my one point of chip damage. Opponent not having the fourth land is nice for me, though. I would have had the kill. I would have had the kill. Um, I think this is just going to be play Dark Confidant, hold up Opposition Agent off Dark Ritual. Opponent thought for a while and then said yes. So let's see what they have. If they brainstorm lock themselves, they're in trouble. If I ambush. A fetch land, they're also in trouble. Not a fetch land, unfortunately. Ooh, recruiter's coming in. I will respond to that. And attempt to floop an opposition agent into play and just eat this creature. Every onboard creature matters. Alright, there's a force pitching Uro. So I will go ahead and just take this one point of damage. I know my opponent has another recruiter. Okay. I just get a I just get a swamp. That's totally good with me. Um, I don't really care about Urborg right now. Um, is there anything I really, really, really want to Karn for? Pithing Needles, okay. Renosphere is very good. Transphere just means that my opponent can't allure and combo me off. To decide whether or not I'm giving up value from my Urza Saga. Maybe I should try to actually win the game. So Urza Saga into Urza Saga into Retrofitter Foundry, into Helm, or something like that. Or I put the pedal to the metal in ending this game while my opponent is stumbling. I could buy it. Do I attack with Bob? Attack with Bob. I could trade with an Ice Fang Coatl in a way that I don't really love, but if I trade Ice Fang Coatl for Bob, that's probably better than trading it for a larger construct. All right, I am getting in those points of damage. I've already played my land drop. Uh, let's call it good. If I could Karn for Trinosphere this turn, I would just do it. But, like, it's, yeah, it's relatively likely that my opponent has access to an Aluren already. And I believe Recruiter of the Guard will just win them the game from this position. All right, yeah, that is, that is Cavern Harpy. I think that will do it. Now, there is a kicked Arctic Merfolk. And that goes and bounces the Recruiter back to hand, which allows them to go and get another portion of the combo with Recruiter. There's another Cavern Harpy. Um, and this, this should pretty easily do it. So they will kick the Arctic Merfolk again, and then get another portion of the combo with Recruiter of the Guard. All right, there is Ima. So when this thing leaves the battlefield, it deals X damage to target player, and you gain X life where X is its power. So this is the point where I am dead. Um, I am very likely going to be playing for a trophy this league. Um, and I think this opponent nearly timed out against me the last time I played them. Um, I'm going to make them click through it. All right, so after repeating their loop a bunch of times, they have killed me. Um, unfortunately, I don't really have a lot here. Um... I can play Plague Engineer that, like, I can put that on human and then Recruiter of the Guards just instantly die. That's reasonable, I guess. Um, eliminates are okay. I'll probably play those. The Sudden Edicts are kind of whatever. Um, they're fine in the early game, but, like, not really great late game. I want Pithing Needle in the deck. The Trinosphere. 
The transfer is okay. Like maybe maybe playing that as a Karn target is just too slow, and I need to board this in innately. Maybe this is a matchup where just like Karn is too slow when my opponent is doing their thing. So I like play a few. I play fewer effective copies of Helm, and then I just play some main deckable cards. I don't really love Sudden Edict. I don't think I can cut any mana sources. I think I need to go Turbo towards Helm or Opposition Agent. I don't think I can cut Dark Confidants. I don't think I can cut a combo piece. I can probably cut one of these go with the map. Probably cut a Sudden Edict and like a Bob question mark. My opponent can just pressure my life total with a number of small creatures. Um, this has turn two opposition agent if I want it, and it has turn two sudden edict for a mana dork if I want it, and just a couple of Delphi void walkers to aggro through blockers. Um, I like what's going on here. Okay, there is a vista that I might eat with opposition agent if my opponent doesn't have like a bird for turn one, which they do. So the question is, do I just edict the bird or do I try to opposition agent my opponent on turn two? Uh, let's just let's just slow my opponent down. I now have both pieces of my combo in hand. Anything I can do to just slow down this game so I can get to the point where I can play Helm and activate it um, sounds really good. Uh, it's awkward because like opposition agent is so good as well. Uh, yeah, it's tough because like trying to snipe this fetch land is so good. Killing my opponent next turn, also clutch. Um, I'm going to go towards um, attempting to slow my opponent down via opposition agent. And we'll see if it works. Like, there's so many three drops that my opponent might want to play this turn. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I, think, uh, I think I'll just chill with opposition agent up. Oh, Plague Engineer is dope. I think I just played Dalphy Voidwalker, though. Like, I play Dalthy Voidwalker, I have Opposition Agent up for if my opponent tries to fetch. And then I just have a theoretical kill next turn, and hopefully my opponent uses some resources on uh, fighting over an Opposition Agent rather than something else. Pernicious Deed. Well, that sure is awkward. Starting this Opposition Agent. Alright. That occurs. Play a Helm. On it fetches in response, go Dark Ritual Opposition Agent. That's a dangerous but very interesting game. I don't think I like that game. Oh God, this pernicious deed has just made this entire game so awkward for me. All right, let's bash in with my 3-2. Opponent goes to 16. I don't think my opponent just blows up Galthy Voidwalker alone with pernicious deed, though. All right. I am, I am unhappy. I'm trying to play neither of these two cards into this pernicious deed. I'm willing to play the opposition agent into it. Um, but I'm relatively annoyed by some of the things happening here. My opponent is finding an endurance, uh, which I guess is trying to hedge against Elm combo. Okay. I guess it also kind of hedges against opposition agent in some ways as well. All right. A plague engineer. Just want more land drops, please. Uh, let's crash in for three. Bring my opponent to 13. I think I probably have to try to force some issues here. Although, otherwise, this deed just sits in play all game. All right, yeah, opponent is just going to float some mana. We're going to name Bird. And just kill the Bird of Paradise. Um, so that fetch land absolutely happens. My opponent can deed for three. That's fine. And I think I just hold up Opposition Agent. I just have a kill with Dalthy Voidwalker into Helm and Dark Ritual next turn. But if my opponent plays something like a Recruiter, I will attempt Dark Ritual into Opposition Agent and see if it works. Opponent could just have like a Source of Postures type card. Uh, note this is a May ability, which is why I did not get to search there. All right, good stuff. So. Four, five, six. I can't kill in one turn. So I'm probably better pressing the aggro advantage here. I'm human. Kill this. Hit my opponent to nine. Oh, opponent didn't fetch with Verdant Catacombs. Um, in response to Opposition Agent. I just realized that. Um, I will play out this creature. 
We should be fine against Pernicious Deed. Opponent does not have black mana currently. Opponent probably can't kill me with Opposition Agent in play. Now I know my opponent has Endurance. Okay, there's a source of Plowshares. That's fine. All right, Eliminate is cool. Let's go ahead and turn these creatures sideways and see what happens. Okay, there is a fetch. All right, Underground Sea is fine. I assume my opponent is going to Endurance. It is an Ice Fang Coatl. I think I'm fine with that. I think I just let that trade with my Plague Engineer and then try to Helm kill my opponent. They have two cards in their Yorian deck. It's basically got to be Swords to Plowshares. Good with that. I'm not going to blow Eliminate here. Let's cast a Helm and see if my opponent is dead. Or very close to dead, rather. In some cases. There we go. Okay, that's that's good enough. Opponent concedes to it. Pernicious Deed. That's definitely a beating. Opponent has Deed that makes me want to put my other Dark Confidant back in. Board out one Chrome Mox for that. No, I can't really board out Mana Acceleration here. It's just so important. The junk can eliminate. Interacting with the combo is really hard once I get the combo going. Maybe I junk one eliminate on the draw for another Bob. Do I want a split of eliminate and sudden edict, or is sudden edict just better since it can't be countered? Weird. Maybe the sudden edict to just answer early creatures is better. I'm I'm unsure there. Like the targeted removal in theory breaks up some stuff, but like Aluren can be notoriously difficult to try and combo through. I don't think Plague Engineer makes a hand keepable. Let's mulligan this. Um, yes, keep. Very difficult to tell what to put back here. Like, I can just play an Ur straight up Urza Saga Ancient Tomb beatdown game. Or I can keep this Dalthy Voidwalker and play that on turn one and then start Urza Saga nonsense. And just, like, be better at a lot of other things in terms of, like, top decking Helm specifically. I'll throw back second Swamp. I hit, a, I hit a lot of land drops with this hand. Right, no no bird this time. Opposition agent. I mean, that's real good. The opponent has played around it so hard. I think it is what it is. It's possible I'm supposed to just play this in the upkeep here in case opponent has a second fetch land. Uh, and this time, I think I just need to use my mana here. Um, since I like want to pivot into an Urza Saga game. So I'm just going to let my opponent like fetch their white source here. Oh, it got Force of Will. Uh, yeah, I'm good with that trade. There's a Ley Line, uh, which is not really what I'm looking for at this point. Um, but now I'm just trying to play the aggro game. Um, so, like, here we can see the fact that this isn't a black producing land, like, having a super major impact on the game. Like, not being able to play Dalthy that Voidwalker that turn, like, probably means I miss nine ish points of damage over the course of this game. Now, the Urza Saga itself will be worth a ton of damage. So, like, there's that. All right. Is it Recruiter time? It feels like Recruiter time. Oh, it is Grist. Oh, that's pretty reasonable. I am very happy to see them mill and learn. Um, I can Pithing Needle Grist in another turn or so. Um, I think I need to fix my opponent's mana a little bit here and give them um, better access to black mana. So I'll end of turn Urza Saga token, my turn Urza Saga token, and Pithing Needle Grist. And then I'll go from there on trying to do something to disrupt my opponent. Alright, there's a fetch land to clear the brainstorm. And now, uh, well, I guess I can just Grist activation to clear the brainstorm. That's reasonable. Um, what's the follow-up play? Okay, just more selection. Sylvan Library. Uh, that's very good. With two blockers on board. So let's make my construct. And I would like I would like a source of trample. I can't really afford to get that. I just have to I think pithing needle the grist here. It just feels too strong to not do that. Alright. Needle. Grist the hunger tide. Am, am I just going to continue to play large constructs? Is that where we're going with this game? Feels like yes. Feels like yes. Alright. And we'll chip away at my opponent for three. I'm not going to try to kill the Grist after Pithing Needling it. 
and an opponent is just going to take that. Um, I don't like my chances of winning this game. Like, so often, opponent will just find, like, a Lurin plus a Recruiter here and kill me. They can dig pretty deep with Library over the next few turns. Like, they maybe can't take a lot of life loss, but they can certainly dig and see enough cards that they have a good chance of killing me. And they can fetch to clear, they can ponder to clear. A prismatic ending away my pithing needle, and then grist to clear. They, they can get deep. All right. All right, there is a recruiter. So this will shuffle after that brainstorm. All right, just finding a recruiter for value. Now that is a helm. I can put Douthy Voidwalker in play and then try to kill with Helm next turn. That is probably my plan. Let's send these creatures in at my opponent's face. I assume my opponent will probably chump block both of them. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like they are indeed going for the chump blocks. I don't have to make my Urza Saga token now. Play my Voidwalker. And uh, we'll see if I'm dead. If opponent finds a lure and I probably die. All right, there is a recruiter. Finding another recruiter. There is a brainstorm now. So they've used recruiter to shuffle, essentially. Okay, that's all fine. So there's worlds where opponent can have three blockers this turn if they have Ice Fang Coatl specifically. I don't 100% just have things via aggro only. All right, opponent is fetching for some reason. Okay. I, I, oh, I guess just fetching around Opposition Agent while I'm tapped out. That makes sense. Oh, Dark Ritual, is that good? That feels good. So if I use my mana for this, I have one, two, three, four, five, which is enough to attempt a Helm kill as well. That also just bolsters my artifact count. Um, so I'm just going to double check myself. One, two, three, plus two, four, five. Yes. Um, so let's make my other creature here. Yes, I'll grab Shadow Spear for trample-based reasons as well. So let's go Dark Ritual into Helm. And this feels like enough pressure that my opponent can't possibly do all of that. Okay. Good stuff. We are now 4-0 playing for the trophy. All right. For the final round, I have been paired with an appropriately challenging opponent. Uh, we are playing against Max Torsion of Min Max Blog. Uh, player draw. I am on the draw again. My opponent very likely is playing Doomsday. They play a lot of Doomsday, but they have pretty good range. They played a lot of Steel Stompy in the past. Not expecting that today. Um, let's mulligan this hand, try to find something that does something a little earlier in the game. This qualifies, and I'll throw back one sudden edict before I know the matchup. Um, I think Max was, like, memeing and messing around with, like, a Ledger Shredder Doomsday deck list. I very much like having Opposition Agent if my opponent is playing Doomsday. We'll probably be leading just on Retrofitter. Uh, I think I have to play Opposition Agent on turn two in this matchup. So, like, despite my temptation to just try and run away th with this game via Urza Saga, I don't think that's correct. Um, and, and, like, I don't 100% sure know that it's Doomsday, but, like, I absolutely have Doomsday vibes right now. I guess my biggest question is going to be, like, when is it going to be correct to jam this Opposition Agent? Like, do I try to catch a card with it, or do I just, like, give Max enough credit to play around it? Well, now I wait, for sure. Try to catch that Scalding Tarn. Um, I think I'm likely to catch it, but on it might upkeep fetch or something. It just becomes more awkward if they play another fetch land. What? All right. I'm gonna rule out Doomsday. I'm gonna rule out Doomsday. Um, we're potentially playing against a deck that can go infinite with this, but this doesn't have the look of like the colorless deck, or well, it's technically a blue deck, but like the largely colorless deck that just plays a bunch of these. I I don't know exactly what I'm facing down here. Um, so let's uh. Let's deploy some cards and uh, see where this goes. I am absolutely a little uncertain about what opponent is doing. Um, always playing Urza Saga. 
unsure if I need to leave up Sudden Edict. I think it's probably more important to deploy this Bob in the face of, like, not knowing what exactly my opponent is doing. That's five mana. How, fa how fair is what you're doing, Max? Ah, okay. This is going to be a sudden substitution to give me the Pact of the Titan. Yeah, exchange control of target non-creature spell and target creature. All right, so I cannot pay the five red mana required of that. Um, so I am just going to die. Cool. All right. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna make my card. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make my token. I will do it with pride. Then upkeep. Put packed on the bottom. Actually, I don't want to show my opponent one more card, do I? And there's nothing that gets me out of this. All right. Unseed. All right. I've never played against this sudden substitution deck, and it's still kind of in development. <clears throat> so I don't really know what to do against it. I'm going to imagine that Him to Torak is good. I'm going to imagine that Sudden Edict is probably bad. Though I guess technically I could Edict myself and... Try no, Split Second. The uh, Substitution has Split Second. So these are going to come in. Probably board this Trinisphere in. That seems strong. And I can probably board out like a Shadow Spear here. Um... Do I want to just board in the other helm to increase my goldfish speed? No, because I want Karn to be able to stop the artifact mana my opponent has. Yes. So I am going to start with Chromox, Imprint Douthy Voidwalker, Ancient Tomb, and Trinisphere, and see if my opponent has a counter spell for that. It is pretty insane if they don't. My hand is much weakened if my opponent um, does Force of Will the Trinisphere, but I will be like relatively able to top deck into a win with a Helm already in play. Um, play this. Do I want to Dark Ritual? Not really. Uh, let's just floop the Helm into play and threaten a kill. I'd like to draw... Leyline, Douthy, Voidwalker, Arn, Him, Bob. A lot of good draws. Urza Saga is fine, although a little slow. All right. And that'll go ahead and shuffle off the Brainstorm. And there's another cantrip. This is just another Doomsday style deck that is probably going to be a little tough to interact with. And... Uh... I'll, I'll jam a Retrofitter Foundry. I wonder if my opponent has any creatures that I can hit with a Helm. Like, is it a good idea for me to just be activating Helm on them? Feels like no. Because if I do hit a creature, unless it is something that is going to scale like a Ledger Shredder, I don't know that it's going to be better than me just having this in play to top deck a win. Okay, there's another land drop. Let's make my small creature here. Uh, that's a ley line. Uh, let's do my one point of damage. Drop my opponent to 16. And then attempt a helm. Or a rip helm, rather. Max? Max, why you gotta be so rude, huh? Why you have to make me so sad? Running everything that I love. Alright. Ponder away. Quick shuffle. I think I'm in the advantaged situation here. Now, let's turn my Servo into a Thopter, and then next turn I can go ahead and just tap this and turn that into a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, opponent says no. That's fine. Hey, Douthy Voidwalker. Now, opponent, like, does not have access to that Lightning Bolt and potentially loses because of it. Let's do this now, I think. Another Lightning Bolt can stop this right now. Two mana. A Braid, sure. That's fine. I didn't want to give my opponent the option of brainstorming into their out by letting them untap more lands. So I'm, I'm good with this, and we will, we will absolutely continue to just play this Retrofitter Foundry. I will poke you with 1-1's game. 
All right. Ash for one. Drop you to 14. And just continue the abuse of trying to combo off. Um, I'll attempt it in my opponent's upkeep this time. Elm, target you. Okay, got it. All right, final game for all of the marbles. Can I beat my opponent's weird combo deck? Do I want to change anything based on what I have seen? I don't think so. This is a reasonable hand with another black card. Like, with a black card, this has turned to Opposition Agent. Uh, I really like Opposition Agent here. I think I keep. Like, I have two draws for I don't know how many cards, probably like 30 hits or something like that. This should work out the vast majority of the time. My opponent not opting to just immediately fetch around Opposition Agent. I always play Swamp. I don't think I need to make a Chromox decision now without the ability to use the mana. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and Expedition Map. There's some worlds where I don't Opposition Agent next turn, and I instead, like, draw an Ancient Doom and just play out a, uh, like, Leyline or Helm or something. All right, opponent has played Scalding Tarn and fetched. Max says, I'm going to try my best to ruin your league, but if you get me, at least it's for a good cause. Okay, so I'm always playing Swamp. Am I always playing Swamp? Is that actually true? I can use Expedition Map off Chromox to get Ancient Tomb. Ancient Tomb, that doesn't really get me any further. I'm just, I'm just like very unsure about whether or not I should like mess around with this Opposition Agent thing, or if I should just try to kill my opponent. It takes so many turns to kill my opponent, though. Like, next turn I can play half, the following turn I can play the other half, and then, like, the Abrades and the Force of Wills and stuff that might come in between kind of mess me up. Maybe I need to give up this and hope that I draw another similar effect. Put the Leyline under that. We'll play a Swamp, and I think I will go for an Upkeep Opposition Agent. I don't want to play it into Lightning Bolt, but I also don't want my opponent to get to their main phase and just be able to, like, fetch around this. All right, this feels like the lightning bolt, and it is. And there's another land drop. And, okay, just fetching around an opposition agent, that's fine. You retrofitter foundry. The Karn turn? Feels like this could be a Karn turn. Let's see if this resolves. Cuts off artifact mana like Lotus Petal and gives me some threatening things for next turn. That is a Force of Negation. Yeah, so if I had gone the Leyline Helm route, that wouldn't have been good enough. So I guess the other thing I can do is just, like, try not to play creatures, right? The Sudden Substitution is Exchange Control of Target Non-Creature Spell and Target Creature. That's also just absolutely a route that I can take. So there's also, like, Summoner's Pact that I have to be thinking about, too. So maybe I can't sit here and just purely try to wait out the Pact of the Titans. I'm just going to play out my stuff this turn, kind of trying to get that in around counter spells and kind of see where we go. That feels like hard cast force to me. Um, I know I just want to like activate Helm or six a whole bunch of times and try to mill my opponent's pact, uh, my, my opponent's green pact. Is that crazy? Can't tell if I'm, like, a genius or an absolute mad lad. Kind of how playing for the 5-0 feels, right? Yeah, I think I'm just going to fire off a helm activation end of turn and just try to mill my opponent out the old natural way. One, two, three, four, five, six. Mill him. All right. Um... Yeah, I'll play that. I don't think I'm actually going to make... Maybe I'm not... Yeah, I don't know that I'm going to make constructs with that. I think I'm just going to mill. Max out. I have no idea if this is a good idea or not. I've literally never played against this deck, but it feels like if I am... Oh, wait, this creates a token. I was thinking of the wrong... Or no, the, the Sudden Substitution is the half that requires a target creature. All right. Fire the laser. Getting seven now. I have milled out a whole bunch of packs. 
That is a helm. I will just float a mana there. That's fine. Oh, sorry, that was the wrong stage. Whatever, I'm I'm casting this ley line anyway to force my opponent to counter it. Petty theft on the helm, sure. Has a tiny brazen borrower now. I can go ahead and crack my expedition map. Go ahead and find an ancient tomb. Work towards having more mana next turn. Alright. Not going for playing this brazen borrower at end of turn. Alright, looks like it's gonna pass back to me. Oh. Lotus Petal, absolutely. There is a Karn. I will absolutely just be floating mana here. Uh, I will find a Chromox. I will not be imprinting anything. It'll be four mana for Karn, which shuts off these Lotus Petals as mana sources and is threatening in its own right. Karn has resolved shutting off Lotus Petals. Now, I am one mana short of just ending the game via Microsynth Lattice, but I have another Helm. So I can try to combo off two turns in a row. Let's just leave that Karn chilling there, not activate it. Here is a Helm, which I am assuming that my opponent counters. GG! We got it. Fucking trophy. It feels like I earned that one. That one, that one feels good. Overall thoughts on the deck list. Um, honestly, I'm pretty happy with this. Deck lists of this general style have been oddly doing well in Legacy, and I'm hoping to showcase a mono black depths deck list that kind of has a similar core to this one. Um, I felt like I had a lot of game in these matchups, and in that last round there, I just feel like I was like threatening combo, threatening combo, threatening combo, threatening combo just all the time. I'm not going to say that this is going to be the most consistent or fastest combo deck list in the world, but like forcing your opponent to respect Urza's Saga while also having other combo kills and randomly hosing some decks via things like Leyland of the Void and Douthy Voidwalker gives you enough game to like very reasonably be in a space where you're creating a competitive deck. Now, would I necessarily recommend this if you're going into a field you know just absolutely full of all of the top legacy decks i don't know um the answer is not no like i put up really good results some of these matchups were absolute nail biters and i think one of my opponents probably beat me uh the the, the meltdown player uh if they floated some extra mana to source the plowshares like i probably lose that one and i get a 4-1 instead um but i'm i'm very happy after playing this league I don't know that I would make any major suggestions moving forward. I like the things that I had access to. It's possible Eliminate not answering Murkide Regent is kind of a huge deal, but like being able to answer like Narsets and Teferis and stuff like absolutely feels like it matters. Um, didn't super get to test out the Him plan. Uh, I think I brought him in in that last round, but for those like Doomsday style deck lists where they're a little tricky to interact with, uh, discard may or may not be the best way to do that. It may be better to play more Trinospheres or something. Um, I don't know, but uh, this is definitely worth experiment experimenting with further. And I hope you enjoyed, folks. If you did, throw me a like on the way out. If you're new here and you made it to this far in the video, please consider subscribing. It means a lot. Have a great rest of the day, folks. See ya!